traveling country to country are easy, like the public transport. When I get to the city I'm visiting, I hear people get ready on the bus. Well, the bus will pull up, stop. I usually wait for most people to get off. I grab my backpack, get my stick out. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. I follow the people, I can hear them, so I know they're getting off. I'm looking for a phone shop. I will um, ask people, is there a shop nearby where I can buy a SIM card if I haven't got one? You can show me? Thanks. Uh, put my new SIM card in my phone. Oh. I use a website called Couchsurfing and I find local people on the website and they have profiles and I have a profile and I contact them. Hello, that Mr. Happy? Hi, this is Tony, your couch surfer. Can you tell me how to get to your place, please? I'm going to take a taxi, so what's, uh, where do I need to tell him to go? Got tomorrow, is it? Got tomorrow, okay. All right, so I'll see you in about half an hour, 40 minutes. All right, thanks very much. Bye. I need to find a taxi now. Taxi? Taxi? Hello? You ready, Queen? Hello. I'm going to uh, Gotamara. Gotara? Yeah, Gotara, yeah. 200. 200? Yeah. Uh, 150? Okay, okay. Okay. Come on. I lost my dad when I was 15, uh, 16. I lost my best friend when I was 16. I don't really talk about. It was a big loss for me. Okay. Nice. Set me off into alcoholism for a good six or seven years. By the age of 24, I was almost an alcoholic. Once I got my head out of a bottle, I could see that there was a different road to go down. I was hung up about being blind for a long time as a teenager, early 20s, and I certainly realised the more people I met, I realised they wanted to be around me, not because I was blind or different, but because of who I was, my personality. Driving along this straight road, a bit of wind, still smell the car fumes, they're everywhere. Mr. Happy, it's Tony. I think I'm at your street, at your place. I'm opposite a restaurant. I can smell the food, uh, but not sure how to get you. Apparently, I'm by the gate. Someone's told me. Hey, hey, Tony. Hello. Guess who's here? Mr. Happy. Yeah. Hi. I'm glad, I'm glad to oh, see you. Good to meet you. Thank you very much for good. coming. Good. You found it already. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to Addis. So Thank you're you. In my place already. He's a really nice guy. Really friendly. As his name was so happy, full of energy. Uh, he's really happy to meet me. I was really excited to meet him. Yes, there you go. You have it all easy. So welcome to your car surfing place. Hey, thank you. Hey. So yeah, your happy home. My space. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. So I can keep you back. Take off my load. Yeah. So uh, this would be a sleeping spot. Okay. Just a mattress. Yeah, that's a mattress. I mostly even sleep here. Okay. Yeah, I like you to sleep on the floor. Great. Yep. Yeah. So one of the main components about my traveling is food. Eating food, talking about food, sometimes buying food and cooking. Hello. Hi. I want to buy uh, Jero, please. Jero, yeah. I was very fortunate that uh, Mr. Happy very kindly offered to cook for me some local Ethiopian food. How much is that altogether? Uh, 70. 70. I bought the shiro and then also a kilo of tomatoes and a kilo of chili to tomatoes meal. This is 10. People are lovely, very, very helpful, very kind. And some people speak a little bit of English. I asked the guy um, to help me to find um, 
And then Giro, he took me right to the, the, the shop, and then the, the shopkeeper helped me buy the food. So, yeah, it's a lovely experience. Sometimes it can be confusing, especially if there's a lot of people pushing and shoving and all shouting for the same thing. Even when you can see, you don't always quite know what you're buying. But for me, it's, sometimes it's a bit more confusing, but you just be patient and keep going, keep asking. Uh, most people will help you. Okay, so what is Giro exactly? So Giro is like a powder made of uh, chickpeas. Okay. It's like one of the staple foods that we have here. So we call this dancing shiro at times. Okay. Because the shiro like kind of bubbles out and then dances in there. And just to can... cook it here, yeah, where the heat is coming from. Yeah, where the heat is coming from. So this we have a charcoal here. Yeah. So a natural uh, fire making. Yeah. You wanna have a try at that? Yeah. You can give me your hand your palm off. And then you can just put it here. And then you can just yeah, take that to your mouth and then just taste it. Nice. Mm. It's quite sweet. Yeah, right? That's yeah. from the tomato and all. Mm. Really it tastes good. as good as it smells. Of course. Mm. Ready for it? Yeah. Great. So our mm. lunch is here. It's what a nice smell. Lunch. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Good. Yeah. Hungry? Oh, very hungry. Great. So we have here our churro at the center, mm -hmm. which is like the focal element of the food. Yep. And then we have a couple of vegetables. So we do like kale. Yep. Kale is like our green vegetable. Okay. And then we have some tomatoes by the side and some chilies. Mostly we take time to bless the food in a way. Okay. So that we kind of give it a good vibration in a way. Yeah. So we just take a few seconds to just be grateful and thankful for having this food. Thank you very much. Great. The other thing culturally in Ethiopia, as, as uh, we eat mm -hmm. together, is something called gursha. Gursha. Gusha, G U R A S H A. Okay. So Gusha is basically feeding each other. Ah. It is like I made a bit of like a bitey uh, hole and then I just give that to you. Okay. Beside the, the, the content of like feeding one person, it's also a sign of respect and care. Okay. It's like a mother feeding a child. Yeah. So there is some care into it. So this was the culture that we do here. So I'm going to give you one of that now. Are you okay. Ready? This will be interesting. Right. So open your mouth and you have your first Gusha. Mm, oh, wow. Nice. This is incredible food. People, you have to come to Ethiopia and eat this food. <laughs> you like it? It's delicious. It's tasty. It's a little spicy. It's a little so rich. There's at least four or five different textures in this one dish I can taste nice. with my tongue. So now's your turn to uh, give me a bite of that. Okay. So let's see how you do your gusha. Gusha. Here you it comes. A nice bowl of it, eh? Wow. Mmm, you're like a pro, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Having this little ceremony, eating traditional Ethiopian food with a lovely person who I now consider my friend is a wonderful experience, very humbling. To be able to share and exchange cultures is it's, it's so wonderful. It's hard to describe, really. Very emotional. pick up a book and thought oh let's go to this place let's go to that place so I had to have the research I had to have the knowledge beforehand and I have a very very good memory so I plan my route before I travel I don't know who I'm gonna meet I don't know what's gonna happen and to me that's all an, all an adventure it's all an exciting and many people I think mean, they couldn't see I couldn't do that I couldn't imagine it but I've never really seen so me I don't worry about it because I don't know it's all the unknown and that's what I love and enjoy so I try and find people I can hook up with online. Found this guy called Mike, local guy. He seemed really interesting, good fun. So I come in the house, you want to meet up, maybe have a coffee or have a chat about Ethiopian life and culture. Tony? Ah, Mike, hi. Hi, uh, Good to meet you. Thanks for coming. All good? Yeah, have a, have a seat. Welcome to Ethiopia. Yeah, thanks. Have a seat. Yeah. After sort of emailing you on um, 
yeah. Facebook and stuff. I just really wanted to meet you and yeah. find out a bit more about you know, yeah. Ethiopia and what's going on in Addis. I know, likewise, man, I really want to meet you, like uh, when we contacted you. We recently had a uh, change. Change, okay. Yeah, uh, in the government. Okay. Yeah, so it was um, not an election, but by popular demand, okay. a new government has come up to power. It's a new government, okay. It's a new government, a young leader, um, kind of visionary. Okay. Yeah, people's man. The first time most people would have heard about yeah. Ethiopia, thought about Ethiopia, it would have been yeah. 85, Band Aid, Live Aid. Yeah. And the farm in the end, but you know, what else? There must there's more than that. There's more to Ethiopia. That image stayed in people's mind and shuttered everything else. When the famine was over and the drought was over, and we were back to safe times, nobody was reporting on that. Like if you take the like with farming side, yeah. Ethiopia is the fifth largest country in the world with the number of livestock. Wow, right. Okay. It's not as it's depicted. Mm. Okay, Mike, where are we going? Now we're going to the headquarters of the African Union. So there, uh, we're going to see a statue, a new statue that was just inaugurated, and it's the statue of uh, Haile Selassie. Oh yeah, our, I've heard of him. Yeah, our last emperor. If you do this, you're getting a nice picture. And if you turn the camera sideways, because it's a vertical. Yeah. Wow, Tony, you're a nice photographer. Thanks. Yeah, you can take this way. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You have a talent for pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, uh, just shoot and point. Hopefully, something will come out. How important is Haile Selassie to Ethiopian people? For some, he was a hero. For others, he was a villain. Because whenever you occupy a throne, those are the two things that you, those are the two balls you juggle. He had tried to modernize the country. Okay. So he did uh, work a lot on education. That was one of his main interests. My grandfather was a big fan of him. Okay. He said he used to come to their school uh, randomly just to check on uh, what the students were being fed. Every time he'd come, he'd bring them grapes, apples, mm -hmm. oranges. And how is he viewed by young Ethiopian people today? Haile Selassie is like uh, immortalized. He's like iconic. And if you bring your hand and uh, interlace it here, and you do this. Ah, you yeah, see? yeah. It goes back to unity. Yeah, yeah, of course. Cool. Yeah. So we're heading into North Addis. We're going to see this art gallery. An art gallery for uh, blind and visually impaired people. I'm assuming some kind of tactile art exhibition, different uh, textures to make a picture or pictures. That's what I'm assuming. And we'll just find out when we get there. Hi Tony, welcome. Hi Anna. Welcome to my studio. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, yes, I hope we would have a memorable time, such a wonderful time. And uh, let me show you one of the art pieces. Oh wow. So we're touching a piece of art. These are people okay. who are laughing. This is their their mouth. Oh, okay. This is their nose. This is their eyes. Oh, these are like buttons, are they? Yes. Oh, is this is a face. Yes. So you can see this is their hands, like screaming, happy, expressing themselves. Mm. Do you like it? It's it's really good. It's really interesting. It really gives a blind person a better understanding of the expression and the people. They get to feel the whole shapes. It's um, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's um, 
really inspiring. So many times you go to art galleries with friends and you sort of feel excluded, but touching this made me feel included. Then the lamb is holding a cross. Cross. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Christian. Christian cross. Christian cross. Yes. Actually, art I can appreciate. And I felt yeah, and felt equal. It was really nice, really positive experience. You're like just like anyone else looking at art. That's, that's cool. one afternoon and it's uh, a bit hungry so got the taxi to stop at a food store on the street and uh, I went in and uh, talked to the guy there and uh, I was talking to him I was telling him oh, my story I travel around the world and I'm blind so we're about to go live on air Are you ready yep all right let's okay. wake the city yeah do you want to come on my breakfast show yeah that'd be cool yeah talk to the people and share my story and maybe inspire a few people Good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies and gents. How you guys doing? It's the best breakfast in town. Your voice of motivation, inspiration each and every single day. And I'm sitting here with an amazing person. Tony Giles is here in the studio. Tony is a blind person, also partially deaf, but managed to travel almost 138 countries around the world. Hi, morning, everyone. So the question that I have for you right now is, I'm sure a lot of my listeners are wondering as well, what are the main challenges that you've faced doing this whole project that you've been doing? One of the most difficult ones is getting money out of ATM machines, cash machines. I have to find someone I can trust. I sort of have to sort of check them out, listen to their story, how they're sounding, and find out I, I can trust them and I can go to the cash machine with them and they have to help me read the screen. I can press the buttons, put my information in, and then and obviously once I've got the money, I need to ask them what denominations, what notes are these. Obviously I can't read a, a menu in a restaurant, so. I have to have an idea of the national dish in each country I visit, so in Ethiopia it's quite easy, it's just injera. So. And probably one of the other biggest challenges for me is crossing borders. So I have to hand my passport over to someone, and I don't know if I, where that passport goes, and I have to hope that it's going to get back to me. What keeps you going to when you are faced with adversity or a challenge, where you do yeah. you keep your chin up and you're like, no, I'm going to make this happen. First time I get tired, I mean, oh, I can't do this anymore. I just, I always think about my best friend. Uh, my best friend died when I was young, and he had um, a serious disability, and he couldn't move most of his body. And I always think of him, and he inspires me. And I think I've got it easy compared to what he had, so you know, I just keep going. Yeah. Ladies and gents, there you have it. We had the one and only Tony Giles here in the studio. It was such an amazing, inspirational story. Yeah, I have dark days. Not so many now. One of the main reasons I started traveling was, was escapism. Escapism from my emotions. I'm very practical, I can do things physically, that's easy. I run away from my emotions. I couldn't deal with relationships for a long time. Because I thought every day relationship would, would end the same way as my relationship with my friend, I thought. People would go away. I thought that's what would happen with every other relationship. Long time it did. I realised that there's more to life and I could stop grieving. But yeah, I still occasionally get dark days. But the way you overcome them, the way I overcome them is I think where am I going tomorrow? I think what's the next challenge? I know people love me, so that's enough. Some people might say, well, I'm, I'm sort of the extreme edge of travel and the extreme edge of sort of disabled people. I do worry sometimes when I'm giving talks and doing interviews, well, I, am I going to put people off? Am I going to think people think, wow, that's incredible, that's so out there, I, could, I couldn't do that, I couldn't possibly. Uh, I wonder if it, in a weird way, maybe I discourage people. I 
guess I just sort of have to tell it and, and let people take from it what they will. Without people, I wouldn't be able to travel. I feel it's a two-way thing. People are helping me, and I'm giving something back. I'm showing them that you can see the world in an alternative way. So they say, how, how do you travel? How can you see? Why do you come to my country? You're blind. And I tell them, I come to eat the food and meet the people and hear the music walk on the terrain up and down the mountains and I can feel it all through my skin and my feet and that's how I see a country. I would say the, the terrain around the churches and the outside is up there with uh, some of the toughest places and terrains I've visited. I just want to be normal. It's so frustrating. Got to be strong all the time. It's the only way I can travel. The only way I can cope.